Hello, this is Michael Jill, and today I'll be doing an unboxing, a review, and speed test of this NVMe 2230 SSD enclosure. Um, I got this on AliExpress and I got it for $16. There are a lot of different um, options on AliExpress. Um, let me show you a few uh, of the ones that I'm seeing here. Um, there are a lot of interesting price uh, variables with AliExpress. Over here it says $971, but it says welcome deal. So, um, yeah. And then there's over here, you can get this one for $13.97 plus a dollar of shipping. Over here, you can get it for $11 with $6 shipping. Over here, it is $10 with $6 shipping again. And over here, it is $11 with $5 of shipping. So there are a lot of different places to buy it. I'm hopefully going to include um, these links in my uh, in the bottom of the video. But let's get to unboxing it. Um, and the reason why I really wanted this one is because it is 2230 size instead of the classic 2280. Uh, so let's take everything out. You got the instructions right here. You got the actual device right here. You have two cables that it comes with. Uh, both of them are obviously USB 3.0, or in this case, it should be USB 3.2 Gen 2. So 10 gigabits a second instead of 5 gigabits a second. That's the real measure, the gigabits a second. Um, you have the screwdriver to put it in and take it out. And you have four thermal pads. Um, so hopefully this helps. Let's open up the actual NVMe enclosure and inside the box that comes in here. So here it is. And as you can see right here, it is rusted a little bit, which is a little bit sad to say the least. I don't know why it is rusted over there. But uh, anyway, let's use our handy dandy screwdriver to open this up. Okay, now that it's open, we can, oh, and the screw actually comes out. We can open it up like this, we can see the inside. And I am actually very happy that it comes with two cables. They usually are very short in these situations. Now let's take a look at the instructions to see how to install it. So here are the instructions. Um, as you can see, there's another model here also, which I actually bought as well. So I have both of these models. And I'm gonna show you the instructions really quick if you wanna pause it to read them. So let's talk about the physical body of the actual device. Um, let's talk about the bottom first. It's just this round little circle thing. Not sure what that's for. Over here you have the ITGZ logo. Um, and over here you have the smart key. If you press this button five times in a row, it will turn on, uh, I think, write protection, which means read only. Uh, and it will tell you if it's on. And then you can press it five times again to turn it off. I'm not sure exactly what the point of that is. Um, but I guess if you're worried that someone's going to use it and um, put on a Trojan or something, you have that protection. Um, this light over here is the, uh, I guess, drive light. Um, when it's writing, it'll be green. And when it is in dormant mode, it will be blue. So that's gonna be very interesting. And that's very nice, actually, um, pretty cool. Uh, over here, you have, uh, I guess, the chip, um, the motherboard, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, I don't know if there's much for me to say, uh, M.2 M key, and as you can see, it is an NVMe drive. So definitely don't want to be putting a SATA drive in there. So let's get my 2230 NVMe drive. Keep in mind, this is only for 2230. I really like the shape and the design. Um, also, uh, the way to put it on, uh, it shows you, is that what you're supposed to do is first put in the drive and then basically just have that um, kind of clamped in with this little piece right here. So we'll see how that works. Little spot right here for the thermal pad, and we're gonna put it on right now. Here's my Samsung NVMe drive. Um, my uh, Crystal Disk Mark is telling me that it is uh, Crystal Disk Info is telling me that it's working well. So let me put it in. All right, so I think I'm just gonna put it in normally. Okay. All right. Hopefully I did that right. I love the instructions. Will be M.2 slowly insert into the interface. All right. It will it into the interface. So um, it has this little peg over here, so that way it pushes it in. So let's, um, I guess first let's put on the thermal pad. It comes with four, I guess, depending on if you have a, I guess if you had a full size NVMe, um, you would need more than one. But I'll use this one. Okay, great. And now that it's all the way in, let me make sure it's fully, fully in. I want to have a uh, bad connectivity and make sure that everything is lined up. So this hole needs to go over there and this needs to go in first. So we would hold that down until we put this in. Oops, right there, you wanna put that in first. And then once that's, once that's in, it should close nicely. 
Okay, I think we are good. Let's get the screw, put it in the screw, and screw it up. Or screw it in, I should say. All right, and here it is. Nice and compact. I really like how small this is. Always wanted a small one. Also, I randomly have a case for this. It's even a little bit big, to be honest. Would have liked it to be a little bit smaller. But um, that's good, that's perfect. And hopefully one of my cables will fit even around this. That would be nice. I could like fit a cable in there. Anyway, let's test it out uh, because I really do want to test the speeds. Um, I won't be able to get the uh, 10 gigabits a second speed, but I think I will be able to get the five gigabit speeds. So let's test it out. I've got to say again that I really like the size of this. It's like tiny compared to a lot of the other drives I have. It makes it almost as small as a flash drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into my computer. And this hopefully is a 10 gigabit cable. Um, it's possible it'll just run a five gigabit, like I said before. I don't know if you can see right here, but both lights are green. I'm assuming that's meaning that it's uh, writing um, and the other light means it's not locked. After double checking, green light on the lock means that lock is off, blue means it's on. And apparently the green light means that it's operating normally on the work LED. So I guess that's good. And it's showing up here in device manager. And here it is in my Windows Explorer. Now I have this 42 gigabyte folder, 43 gigabyte folder I should say. Uh, let's see how long it takes to transfer it. This is about a thousand files. Okay, I'm gonna start the stopwatch and I'm gonna start the transfer. Okay, and the transfer is happening. As you can see, it's transferring at over 300 megabytes a second. And the files are going super fast. Should be finished in less than two minutes. While it's writing, this green light is blinking. So that's nice to see. It's letting you know that something is being written to it. It really shows me that there is something being written, which is a nice thing to always see whenever you're transferring anything. Since this whole chassis is made out of aluminum or metal or whatever it is, um, it is... Um, a heat spreader and uh, like acts as a heat sink which is really nice uh, to have so that way it dissipates the heat much quicker I mean it's pretty consistently keeping its speed at around 350 megabytes I would definitely say this is an A plus drive and now the case feels really hot so it's slowing down a little bit and now we're at 200 megabytes a second still a phenomenal speed in my opinion and it's almost finishing up at 2 minutes and 34 seconds nice ITGZ claims that this drive can transfer at one gigabyte a second. As you can see, it has a crystal disk mark uh, screenshot over here of 1049. And it's saying that it could do one gigabyte a second. At 10 gigabits a second, it should be able to transfer at one gigabyte a second. So those are the theoretical speeds. But let's see what speeds we're going to get. I don't think that um, I'll be able to connect via USB 3.2 Gen 2. So I'll be just getting the uh, five gigabit speeds, which is going to be probably less than half of these bees. Now in its heated state, I'm gonna run Crystal Disk Mark. So obviously this test is gonna do much worse than the um, much worse than the test that it uh, could be doing, I guess. Meaning if it wasn't already so hot, it probably would be a little bit faster. And honestly, this drive is just so hot right now. I can't believe it created this much heat. It is really hot. And I realized, because it wasn't blinking, that I was running it on the C drive. So now I am running it on the right drive, which is DIT. GZ D drive, so it's gonna work fine. And here are the results. As you can see, it's upwards of 400 megabytes a second, which is really nice to see. I wonder if it was USB 3.2 Gen 2 or 10 gigabits a second, if it will be doing better, but apparently I don't have that connection. Um, again, the device is super hot. So I guess I'm pushing it to the limit with the thermal, uh, the thermal part anyway, so I don't know if I'd recommend using it at 10 gigabits a second. Well, let's test out this smart key. One, two, three, four, five. And now it's blue instead of green. So that's what is supposed to happen. So it says after the write protection is enabled, you won't be able to delete, modify, or change any of the, any of the files. I copy this file from my downloads folder to the D drive and see what happens. And it totally is still working. Now let's try to delete that file. Let's try to delete everything actually. Delete. All right. And it's gone. So uh, that's not really uh, working. So this function uh, is not actually working. Um, I uh, I just tried it and yeah, I don't know. Um, not sure why that is. However, I would definitely recommend this. It's an awesome piece to have. I really like the fact that it's tiny and square, um, much smaller than my other NVMe devices. As you can see, this is pretty big. And even the my uh, WD My Passport SSD, which 
which is still much smaller than it. So uh, all in all, I would say that um, definitely a good value if you're looking for something small, but it's a niche product. Thanks for watching. I hope that this was helpful for you and have a great day.